We are already on the second to last episode of the 12 Principles of Permaculture. Um, Today we are visiting principle number 11, which is to use the edges and to place value on the margins. I think that you could interpret this in a myriad of ways. Let me tell you what my interpretation is and how I implement that here. So my interpretation would be that you're taking advantage of as much real estate space as possible, whether that be for growing crops or grazing animals. You're thinking about growing vertically. So we obviously have an infinite amount of space within reason when it comes to growing upwards and not outwards. But I think a lot of us tend to forget all of the different little areas on the property where you can easily and successfully grow crops. An example would be on the corner of my barn, uh, there's some vines. I think it's Virginia creeper. It's, it's, uh, it just runs rampant here in New Jersey. But along with that, I went ahead and planted some cold hardy kiwi when we first moved in about seven years ago now. And I brought that vine with me. And the idea had been at the time just to sort of heal it in, just get it in the ground, make sure that it stays happy until I find a more permanent location. Well, that vine took off. It is now covering the side of my barn and turns out it's the male. And so I needed females in order to get fruit. Finally, seven years later after planting, I got the females installed. Hopefully we'll get some cold hardy kiwis. But the reason I'm telling you this is because even the sides of structures can serve as trellises for crops. And I think as someone who's coming from a homestead that started on three quarters of an acre property to now living on a six acre property, I can say that there is quite a bit of potential for growing food in a small space or in a backyard. Or even when I was in between places and I lived in an apartment while I was house hunting on a balcony. So don't ever underestimate the value of hanging plants, trellises, pots and containers. There's so much potential there and there's so much real estate that can serve a purpose. Quite frankly, I kind of look at it as if mother nature is going to plant a weed there, there's room to grow something there. Property, um, Edges, property lines are a great space for flowering and fruiting shrubs, especially perennials that are going to come back year after year and get larger rather than install conventional privacy fencing. Could a plant be there, something that's evergreen that wouldn't necessarily lose its leaves during the cold season if you live in a climate where that happens? There's all kinds of ways to use every ounce of space other than just trying to grow in the confines of a garden plot. I mean, even now, I want to grow food beyond what my actual fenced-in garden can hold. So I've started different food forests throughout the property. The next thing would be grazing animals. So especially on a farm where I value and implement rotational grazing amongst several species, there is a lull when we start our rotational grazing program come spring. My animals are not restricted from pasture access during the winter time. I've been down that road. I had a horse who colicked. I believe animals need movement. I'm not going to restrict them. That means that come spring, we are kind of a mud lot, which I hate. Rather than confine them to a sacrifice plot, over the cold season, they get full access to the enclosed pasture spaces. That means come spring, I'm sowing cover crops. And while I'm waiting for that crop to come in and establish itself, I start using other areas that the animals wouldn't normally frequent. That means outside pasture spaces are fair game for grazing. I use portable electric fencing running on a solar charger. I think it's Premier One is the brand. And I just set that up and move it about wherever I want my animals to go. So they're now grazing on backyard grass that they haven't been on and hasn't been trashed, you know, all winter long. And while their pasture spaces grow in, that kind of is a a bit of a substitution for forage for us. But even later on... um, I think it was in July or August, I had posted a reel showing this really lush, grassy area. You know, the horses are turned out on there, the sheep are turned out on there, and that's outside of the of the fenced-in lower pasture. But if it's there, and if the animals are going to eat it, and if it's not harmful to them, and in fact it's part of their diet, why not use it? I not only utilize the margins for planting, I utilize it for grazing, especially since climate and weather is an issue, and as hay prices start to increase, that's even more valuable than ever. 
I also think, though, it just in daily life, you know, we talk about how permaculture is more of a mindset. It's not just companion planting. It's not just sort of farm approaches. It is sort of a lifestyle. Utilizing the margins in your home, hanging plants, storing things where maybe you might not otherwise think of, trying to just maximize your space. Because if we're maximizing our space and we're trying to use what we have to its full potential, we're not going to go out and buy something else. We're not going to go out and try to get more. We're going to use what we have. And so that's sort of my interpretation of this principle. As always, feel free to share yours in the comments. And we have one more mini podcast series episode left. We will visit number 12 soon.